Hello and welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Storch, your favorite Faro equestrianologist, and we're here to continue our build on the Freight House with this video 7 in the series, so stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back. I'm glad you're coming back and sharing this time with me and uh, hopefully you've got a building in your lap that you're scratch building while you're watching my videos and hopefully learning something from what we're going through in this process of building all these buildings for Graft in West Virginia. Uh, but in any case, in this video, uh, you know, we're going to jump into it. Well, I want to start working on that uh, second story brick on that triangle piece on the end of the building in this one. I want to continue with wrapping around, uh, you know, the brick archways and the dental work. I want, I'd like to come up with a solution uh, if we're, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to mold them, but those little brick stair steps that hold up all those little, uh, our, uh, supports for the roofs on the walkways and on the end of the building as well. Uh, you know, there's several things that there's just a, there's a lot more we need to get into on this building. So, you know, at least we're going to touch on those things and we'll see what else we can get into. So let's just jump into this building and go with it. There's not a lot of good pictures of this triangle area. Some of these, you know, you can get an idea of what's going on. Now, you know, this is layered the same as all the walls were. And it has this big vent structure in the middle. And it also has this wood uh, ornamental work underneath the eave up at the top as well. So here we can see the two columns that come up that mimic the columns underneath the door. And then there's steps of the brick where it goes down and meets the wall underneath and there's brick ledges underneath the angle pieces as well that come up and then of course that louvered piece has to be cut out of the middle of it so you know that there's a little bit of involvement in this so we're going to come back and just start the layering at first on the bottom edge we're going to do a two layer brick ledge all the way across and then I need column pieces that are a foot and a half wide to come up and then that brick edge so we're going to come back here and just lay out where the columns go before I start gluing anything into place. And I just laid it on the bottom half of the building and uh, made marks as to where the columns were. Then I glue that two brick strip on the bottom and then meet the column pieces to that and just let them overhang that you know the two brick piece does too and then cut them off flush with the brick once that's done. And then that gives me an edge and the ability to come back and put this other brick along the angles going up both sides to the peak. Now that's the basic structure, so what I want to do is just go ahead and come back and cut out this louver area. And you can see that the, the, the brick arch over top, it's about a half a brick wider than that archway from either of the columns on either side. And the top of the arch comes even the brick with where that angle meets on the columns on the side. So I kind of know basically about where this is going to be. So I lay it out and uh, mark the uprights and put my circle template on there and get the arch right in it. And then I come back and just drill a hole, use my nibbler, and then use my knife and a file and just get the opening all cut and open where the uh, louver will go. Now where this meets the other wall, I want to give it a little bit more support. Uh, yeah, so I went ahead and uh, just cut this brace piece and these tabs that will go down in behind the other wall once I glue this wall to those. So it'll give me good st uh, structural support in there. And you can see, you know, this is just the outside view of it and how it lays out. But basically it just, you know, gives me a lot more glue surface. So, you know, on this end here, uh, you know, we went ahead and did the archways and the brick up in there too before I attached this wall. Not that you would have to, but, you know, I'm just trying to slowly come around the building and get that work done on it as I'm working on other stuff too. So then I go ahead and attach this triangle, uh, you know, roof area to, the, to that wall. And uh, we'll come back and go ahead and add some trim and stuff to this. But basically, that's the whole end wall together at this point. And you can see, you know, the, um, 
trim underneath those angle pieces along the side and then it, it comes down and upright versus the horizontal rows so you know I cut a strip that has the brick coming upright and, and glue that strip inside those and glue this extra little strip underneath where the wall connected uh, to create another ledge effect there and um, basically that's you know that whole wall in place with all those brick ledges and everything in place so now the windows and the vent structure are the only thing left to put on this end of the building well we'll have the wall supports too but uh, you know, and then those wall supports, we did create all these uh, molds for those. And I went ahead, uh, call boxes for telephone poles along the railroad were something during the steam days, the, you know, before a lot of the newer radio technology. And since I model steam, I'm going to need call boxes. So I went ahead and make some molds of these four call boxes uh, to cast as extra stuff while I'm, you know, casting everything. And after four days of molding, then I have all these supports for all the roof uprights on the end of the building as well as the long sides of the buildings. And I also have all this extra stuff. You know, it just took a little cast extra resin each day and you get tons of extra stuff. And the other thing are these supports, these little brick ledges that are on all the columns that we need to make for, to support those arm, wooden arms that go up and support the roof. And, uh, you know, I just decided to go ahead and make these in this fashion out of plastic. The, th the real thick brick, I'm going to cut a four row piece and a two row piece and glue those onto each other. Then I'm going to come back with two real thin brick pieces and set one in front of that upper brick piece and then one down lower on the front of that four brick row to create a stair step brick piece and I'm just going to do this all manually instead of molding it the way I thought originally because it just it's not that time consuming to do and I actually like the, the look of the original stuff versus the molded stuff the molded stuff you can come back and clean them up with files and stuff but the originals just always look better so at this point, uh, this is where the building stands. I still have some more of the archways to put over the windows and doors on two sides of the building, but basically all the dental work is in place. And you know, now we have this end on the building as well. And uh, you know, we can start thinking about the second story structure at this point and how the roof is gonna tie in. And uh, you know, once we start thinking about that, we have the windows and the doors to come back and make, and then all the platforms. Um, really, the platforms will have to be done first because the ceiling ties into all those, but uh, you get the feeling of what's going on at this point. So, there you have another segment of Stu Structures and the Freight House under construction. Um, you know, it's another slightly short video. I just decided to go ahead and do as much as I can do in these weeks where my time is being consumed elsewhere and, and try to get something out there even if it's just a little shorter than my normal length videos just to get something out every week. Uh, I, I don't know how long this is going to last either. I'm, I'm really pushing everything from all ends right now to do as much as I can do elsewhere in my life. Uh, but I do want to continue building on this building so I'm getting a little accomplished each week. And you know some of these processes just you know the molding I mean it's you know it takes 15 20 minutes in the morning to mold and then the next day it takes you know 10 15 minutes to unmold and another 10 15 minutes to remold uh, you know so that's going on the whole time even though you're not there working on it it's setting up in molds and stuff so things are getting accomplished even though you're not there working on them and these other processes, you know, just putting all the, w the bricks over those archways and those windows, it, it takes a little while to lay out all those little bricks. It's getting quicker now that I've done several of them, but it, it still takes a little while to do those. It's just time consuming. So, you know, a lot is getting done, even though it doesn't seem like a whole lot is getting done. Uh, but, you know, once we get those brick archways out of the way and a lot of this brick detail down below and the molding is pretty much just about done at this point. Uh, those brick ledges I decided to make by hand. It was just a whole lot easier to cut the brick and glue them real quick than it was to mold over several days and make the molds and all that type of thing. And I like the looks of them. That, that, you know, they look better than some of the molded brick detail I made. So it would be good, nice to use those for those supports that... Uh, 
that I molded to hold up the roofs and the, uh, the awning, the eaves and stuff. Uh, but in any case, uh, like and share these videos. Uh, there's people out there in the world that want to know this you know, information and don't have a clue that it's out here. So share it with them. Uh, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon down there and then you'll be notified when I have videos that come out each week. And, uh, you know, I do have odd stuff that I throw in from time to time. I decided in the next week or two when I'm, you know, traveling to Virginia and doing all this other stuff that I, I, I have a personal video that explains a little bit about me and my life and where I'm coming from. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, and I've had some questions on it too, but sometimes it's just, it's nice to know a little bit about the person maybe that you're watching on here to know that he's not a, a hoodlum or <laughs> whatever. Um, anyway, you know, I'm from West Virginia. I'm a hillbilly. I do landscaping and stuff for a living. So, anyway, I, I, you know, with everything I'm going through in my life right now, I just thought it'd be nice to put out kind of a personal video to give you a little bit of my background. So, I've got that together, and it'll come out maybe in the next week or so as, as one of my weekly videos to give me time to uh, get some other stuff done as well and then get back into the building of the, of the building here a little more. So in any case, I hope this has given you a little bit of inspiration to go out there and try to scratch build some buildings of your own. Um, you know, it's all a learning process. Uh, you're never going to be able to do it if you just jump, don't jump out there and do it. And you know, you'll, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. It's really not that hard. I say this over and over, but it's more time consuming to figure out how you're going to do things than anything else. And you know, a lot of things you can find videos on. That's why I'm throwing these out there that maybe give you some ideas and, and ways of doing things that may or may not work for you, but maybe they'll lead you into a better process to where you end up with a better product than what I'm doing. Uh, you know, so it is all trial and error. So anyway, I do appreciate you coming back and sharing this time with me. Um, you know, I enjoy putting these videos out there and I'm, I'm getting quite a few subscribers now. So it's, it's nice to know that people do want this information. I, I didn't know where to go to look for this kind of stuff when I was, you know, doing it when, you know, you, uh, all these channels first came out on the internet. And, you know, there's getting to be more and more of them now, but not a whole lot of people do scratch building out there. Uh, Vinny, uh, you know, he, he's a good scratch builder. He puts stuff out there in scratch building, and there's a few other odds and ends from people, uh, but not a lot of them out there. So, anyway, I hope this helps you, and I hope you're enjoying your trains and uh, building some buildings or model railroading in any form. If you, maybe you like scenery or something else. Uh, but just get out there and enjoy the hobby. It's a nice escape from reality and uh, you know I really enjoy doing it. It's been a lifelong passion of mine. Uh, so in any case, I hope you're enjoying your uh, trains and happy model railroading.